In the job description of robotic software developer and researcher, you will find ROS2, NVIDIA Isaac, Sim and other simulators. The main reason is to see the robot before putting it in a physical real world to save costs and plan properly. Now you don't have a job let's say and you want to get into these frameworks to build a robotics career and start completing the requirements of the job. The place where people get stuck is what to start, what to do with this framework because ROS2 is just for communication. So in this video we are going to explore the possibility of learning ROS2 in a practical way with an actual robot so things can make sense. If ROS2 is just communication, what are the things that our robot should be processing through ROS2 and what things should it not be doing it. So let's explore in detail. The very first step you perform is to obtain the robot. A differential drive robot is essential because without a robot, it becomes very hard to understand ROS2 until unless you are very good at software. So the thing that I refer as based on the experience I had, I was implied to learn ROS1 and I was doing a RoboCup SSL league in my degree. So the communication was happening through ROS. That's why we were forced to perform ROSification of our robot. So first make the robot drive through simple commands on your laptop, then install ROS2 in your system and serially or Wi-Fi communication and drive the robot through ROS2 nodes through command velocity topic and understand nodes communication, launch files, no need for services, just drive the robot through command velocity. That is the first step to make your robot interface with ROS2 system. So you can work on the actual powerful machine and the robot just drives. The next step is to visualize the data in RWIS through ROS2. Now, what does this mean? Your robot will now have sensors. You are going to add sensor, distance sensor, camera sensor with Raspberry Pi or any other sensor that sends data. Now, this is going to make more sense why you need ROS or other simulations like this. Because on a microcontroller from your robot, you can just log things that this is the value, this is the distance and just the values on the text. But with RWIS or Matplotlib, you are going to visually see things in the 3D space which is going to make more sense about the environment and you can analyze and write algorithm precisely. So this is something that helps you to publish the data from your robot into ROS2 framework so you can visually see and write nodes that can process that data. Then this step is going to then connect more information from your robot to the ROS2 system. The next step is to process the data in ROS2 ecosystem by getting sensor data from robot and sending velocity outputs to your mobile robot. ROS2 might be running on your system, will be doing the processing. And this is going to teach you a lot of things. You can develop a service for it. You can write a node for the processing. The thing that you have to learn here is, I'll give you an example for obstacle avoiding robot. Your robot with the sensor is going to give you distance from obstacle in front of it. So that data is going to come up in ROS2 ecosystem through nodes or publisher, which you are going to visualize in RWIS and write an algorithm to generate velocity for that. That velocity command is going to be sent on the topic of command velocity that will be sent to the robot. So in this whole process, what you are going to do, write nodes and can be a service. Service is going to sort of say just whenever there is an obstacle, turn left. This is going to be a service, a different type of communication style as compared to nodes. The main thing that you are learning here is processing sensor data sense, plan and act behavior planning on the ROS2 node and executing on to the robot with command velocity. This whole ecosystem is going to make you understand ROS communication activities and uh, replying with control commands to your robot. That's what you have to learn here. In all of these steps, having a robot, controlling the robot, getting sensor data, processing the sensor data, the most important thing for you to understand is everything is simplified. No complication, no AI, no fancy sensors like 3D LiDAR or depth camera or AI and computer vision, machine vision, none of those things. For the reason that I wanted to keep things simple. ROS2 or NVIDIA Isaac Sim, whatever you are learning, understand it with a very simple project on your robot and understand the communication things, components of ROS2, apply it with your robot. No need to overcomplicate things. 
After this project, you can increase the sensor. You can bring in depth camera. You can bring in 3D LiDAR ca camera, costly sensors, which brings us more sensor data. So you can practice more different processing algorithms, generate autometry, visual inertial autometry, and things like that. But the main process is there. You were targeting to learn the simulation software and communication framework. That's what the main goal was. So understand it in simple projects, then utilize real sensors or recorded data available online.